What's going on? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm super happy to be here. What an honor. I've never been to Moscow before. Let's talk Twitch. That's what I'm here to do. Twitch for game development and growth. You guys know about Twitch? Can I hear a clap? No? Yeah? Yeah! All right. We've made it to Russia. Alex, we made it to Russia. I remember when Twitch was nowhere. I was talking about when I got up here, like, I used to talk about Twitch to people, and they're like, they had no idea. So for me to be standing here in front of all of you awesome people to talk about Twitch makes me super, super happy. So who am I? I'm John Carnage. That's my stage name. That's how people know me in the world of Twitch. So uh, as you could probably tell, uh, I have a lot of personality, so I, I'm a little bit bigger than life. And all these things that I did in my past, uh, I was a, a cage fighter. I was a pro fighter uh, in the WWE. Uh, are, you guys ever heard of that? <laughs> I was a fake pro wrestler. And I was like, how is that going to work for me? I became a, a stand-up comic because I wasn't really good at being a pro wrestler. Uh, I also uh, did stand-up, and I failed at everything. I actually sucked at everything I tried to do. And so all those things that I failed at actually made me really, really good as a broadcaster for Twitch. So as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, I decided, what is this thing called live streaming? Before Twitch, it was just in TV. So I figured, why don't I try this? And so as, uh, well, here, if you look at this right here, some of these numbers that we have for, for E3, which is our marquee show of the year, which is like what we would call our Super Bowl, um, some really good numbers there, 5.9 million total unique views for uh, 2014 on day one. And then over here, <laughs> 21 million unique views. So it's jumped uh, massively in that time. Uh, but before all that, I was, like I was telling you guys, just a live streamer. And you can see by the old logo up there how far back I go. And this was about 2010, 2011, um, back when, you guys can't see it too well, back when two, having almost 3,000 concurrent was unheard of. And how did I get to all that was because I did anything to try to get people to laugh. And that was my philosophy. Uh, I treated all of you guys out there as my best friends. Like, we were just hanging out, kind of like what we're doing now. And so uh, you could see I'm in my underwear. You can't do that anymore. That stuff is not allowed anymore on Twitch. But back when I was doing it, it was called the Wild West. It was the Attitude Era. So uh, we actually, this is a funny story. See, the shirt over here, um, we had to make that shirt because we didn't have enough money to pay for the electricity bill. So we made this shirt in order for us to pay the electricity bill because Sega, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog, they were gonna come by and the power went out. And so like 24 hours before our biggest stream, we've never had any developers before, and this was a very long time ago when developers weren't doing anything on Twitch. And we'll get into what you guys can be doing now a little bit later. So right before... Yeah. Our power went out, so we had to make these shirts. And in 24 hours, we sold 800 shirts, enough to pay the electricity bill. So that's the only reason that Destructoid shirt exists. And so why I'm in my underwear is that we're trying to play Connect, and uh, Connect wasn't reading me. So I decided to get in my underwear and then play Connect in my underwear. So that was then. Where are we now? Twitch 101. If you guys don't know, we were pretty big. Uh, we have 100 plus million unique visitors per month. Uh, 1.5 million broadcasters, and then everybody on our site spends about 106 minutes every day. So that's people watching gaming content. We're going to get into all the crazy stuff that's on us. It's not just gaming anymore. It's cooking and um, film and all sorts of really cool stuff. Uh, things that you guys might not be too familiar with because, you know, if you're making games, you might just think Twitch is only games, but it's not just that. So these are some of the developers that we have doing really cool stuff. There's eSports, there's communities. Oh my gosh, the community thing is just like growing uh, incredibly. Uh, media, there's all sorts of media on us and not just gaming media anymore. Uh, Adult Swim is on us. Uh, HBO has done stuff on us before. So it's not just gaming media and we'll get into all that too. So we are a live streaming leader. That's right. We're the boss of something, finally. We're really, really, really good at this. 
Uh, as you can see, we make up most of uh, the live streaming stuff that's going on. Of course, this is primarily for gaming as well. Okay, what are developers doing on Twitch? What can you guys be doing on Twitch? So, they're creating their own original content. That means creating a channel and taking it from there. When you guys are thinking about the ecosystem of Twitch and what you want to do, you don't have to overthink how uh, complicated and how big the universe is. You could just start by creating a channel. Really, that's it. You don't have to go any further than that. Um, if you want to go further, because I suggest that, you start engaging with the Twitch broadcasters. The broadcasters are the blood of Twitch. These guys keep it going. They play your games. They're the one hyping your games. They're the one saying, hey, this game's actually pretty cool. You should check it out. Uh, surprising enough, uh, don't worry about people who are reviewing your games anymore. That's what I'm saying is that people who are playing your games are really way more important than people who might be reviewing your games. Traditional media has completely changed, whereas a number uh, assigned to your game, 10 being the best, and everything else below that being, you know, leading up to 10, is, is more important in our world to have people playing your games and having fun. So it doesn't have to be a perfect 10 game. Gathering feedback. So once your game is out there, you're doing your thing on your original channel, uh, you're working with our broadcasters, you're starting to figure out all this stuff, you're gonna start getting feedback. Because this is gonna help you with maybe the creative process of your game. Maybe you saw something that you didn't see before because you have an engaged community playing your game, thinking about only your game or your games and talking directly to you. Maybe you gave a bunch of uh, uh, broadcasters a prototype or an alpha or a beta and so they're able to uh, get into your stuff and see things that you wouldn't have seen before because that's what these people do. Our broadcasters play games all day. Um, and then, of course, if you have an eSports title, a little bit bigger of a game, you can uh, have tournaments. Not even if you have an eSports title. People do tournaments uh, with all genres of gaming that exist on Twitch. So these are some developers using Twitch. Blizzard, you guys probably know with them. They, did a heart, they, they support Hearthstone really hardcore because Twitch is really, really into Hearthstone. And they revealed that at PAX. So that was like a couple of years ago. Riot Games, LCS, massive, massive, massive on Twitch. Bungie, Bungie, uh, they did a, a House of Wolves game reveal on Twitch, which we'll get into a little bit, and that was massive. They actually revealed the game on their channel. Uh, High Res Studios, these guys are still pioneering a bunch of really, really cool stuff on us. Adult Swim Games, they are now finally doing regular weekly content, which is in their own unique voice. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with them, Adult Swim in America is a very, very, very cool brand. They are identified as super dope. So when people see Adult Swim, they want to do, they want to know everything that they're doing because Adult Swim anything is awesome. Rockstar Games, uh, Grand Theft Auto, they are having people who make the music in their games come by the studio and play the game. GTA. So that is actually really, really cool because they have the access to getting celebrities and musicians who are in their games to come by, hang out with the community, and play GTA. And uh, I think they might play a couple other games, but they mostly stay with uh, GTA. And they do a lot of really cool stuff with their community as well. Nintendo, they finally have started to do a bunch of stuff with us. They, uh, they do content announcements, but they also do their Nintendo Direct on us as well. Um, that took a long time, you know, Nintendo being a very Japanese company. But as Twitch kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, they started to realize how important it was for them to exist within Twitch. 2K Games, they do a bunch of stuff. Um, every time they do stuff with their WWE titles, they do uh, character reveals or storyline reveals within their WWE games. And those streams do incredibly well as also. Um, Capcom. Street Fighter, they do character reveals on that as well. You guys kind of get the idea, right? Like, they, these bigger studios with games that are already big, they do character reveals, content announcements, and stuff like that. 
Smaller studios like Devolver Digital, and I would even say Adult Swim Games, they do more like Let's Plays, uh, traditional stuff that you're familiar with. They'll sit down and they'll have regular content sitting with their community playing, not just their games, but I think kind of all games that exist within the gaming sphere. So, Bungie, what do they do? Yeah, Activision and Bungie have been pushing their newest Destiny expansions hard on Twitch. They were really, really, really focused on getting the content on Twitch because that's where they found that people were watching, and it paid off big. Uh, they took advantage of our interactive audience, obviously. You want to do that. That's the one thing I have in every slide here is take advantage of our interactive audience. The audience is living, it's breathing. Although they're in text form and they're typing to you, they're there and you have their attention, they're watching your stuff. So they, they did their Wolves expansion. And look at that. <laughs> they, did three, they did three streams with it, and they had 1.5 million views. That's pretty crazy. People were thirsty for this game. They're still thirsty for it. And this is something that happened back in 2015. So anytime Bungie does anything on us, this is big viewership for them. It's used as marketing for them, but it's used as a chance, a rare chance to talk directly to their community in their voice. So they don't have to uh, do it any other way. They could actually own everything that's on their channels. Uh, and it was one of the most watched reveals of 2015. I think the record is still up there, uh, and we'll get into some other records that might have broken it. I'm not too sure yet. But yeah, Tiny Bill, these guys did something different. Yeah, I hear it. There's one person out there. These guys took a different approach to Twitch. Um, and this is an approach that I hope will convey to you guys who make games or wondering, wondering how to make games and how to incorporate live streaming into your games or figuring out the new sphere of interactive entertainment. And so they took a different approach. They built integration into their Punch Club game. And this was amazing for them. It was, uh, it was amazing for me to see a developer finally take a chance and put in commands into a title, meaning that the chat controlled the character in game. So it became a new genre of gaming, uh, something that is still very, very new, and a lot of developers haven't really jumped into yet. And so <clears throat> once Punch Club <laughs> was beaten by the chat, the game was going to be uh, on Steam. I thought this was going to take weeks. <laughs> I don't think it took very long. <laughs> the, the chat beat it. The chat always seems to do stuff that we think is going to take forever, but they end up doing it really quick. And so uh, they beat it right away. The game came out. And um, this was content that, you know, if they would have just did this in a traditional way, they would have just released the game, and uh, that would have been it. But no. They took a game that they realized was marketing and, and an opportunity for, to, for them to do something different and make it bigger and have a life of its own, which then created a bigger life for Tiny and for, for Punch Club by using the Twitch's API. Yeah, so what happened is there is a sense of engagement unlike there's ever been before. See, the community felt like they were part of a community. They actually got to do something really, really cool, and they got to be a part of something that really has never actually existed before. I mean, there might have been a couple of instances, and we'll go into some of that, Twitch plays Pokemon and all this other stuff. But in this, in this form, with an actual title, with, uh, with a budget and studio and all sorts of other stuff, uh, it was a rare chance for a community to feel like they're a part of something special and a first. And so all that stuff really sticks, and it helps growth in uh, tremendous ways. So, but if you don't have the ability to do what Tiny Bill did, or to have a major an announcement like a bungee, don't worry. It's not always about that. You can sometimes just do what For Warframe does. They do podcasts. So they sit around, they talk about their game, and they talk about content, and they talk about what's important to the community. And they don't even do these on a regular schedule. They do these every so often. So whenever they do these, they matter, but it doesn't have to be 
every week, every day. Uh, I think it's at least once a month. So it's important to them to actually have something to say, and it's important to your community to hear something important. And then EA. This just happened. So they had a huge success with their Battlefield 1 reveal. This just happened. Uh, up until then, everybody was talking about Destiny, Destiny, Destiny. Well, this, this was like last week or this week, and um, it was massive. And the, the, the thing with this reveal, it wasn't your traditional reveal. They had an, a very long stream. The, the stream in the beginning was a celebration of all the other Battlefield games leading into the world reveal of Battlefield 1. But leading into that was super important. In our world, in the Twitch space, um, long-form content is, the, is like what drives viewership. So by them creating this uh, four-hour show before led to much bigger numbers later. If they just would have came out with the reveal, it would have been great, but they had content before. So whenever I create shows, because that's what I do for Twitch, is I'm the live programming director, I don't just do one-hour shows. I have to create 12-hour shows. And that's really important because Twitch is long form. So when you guys are thinking about like, how long should I go live for if I decide to make a channel and stream on Twitch, you should at least go live for a minimum of one hour. Uh, that will get you excited. And that will work for you because most broadcasters on Twitch, and just like this stream right here, uh, they go for like six, seven, eight hours every day. And no one's asking you to do that. Um, but that's usually what is success on Twitch. Okay, dev success. Yeah, so what is that, right? We have something to help you guys. Um, we want to make sure your games are successful on Twitch. There's a team for that now. It's not my team. But there is a team dedicated to getting broadcasters up and going, getting them out there, helping them with content, and making sure that your journey on Twitch isn't stressful, it's, it's successful. And so we help the uh, developers present their games to viewers and broadcasters who may be interested in them. But who, right? When you can sit down and you look at Twitch, you go, well, who's going to want to watch my game? We have people who now understand when you present a game to us, how to take that and internalize it and go, this group of people's into it. This is a speed running game. This is a, this is a roguelike. This is a RTS game. See, the genres can keep going on and on and on. And then in Twitch, it could be understood and segmented. Um, we help with creating community-driven programming. That's what I was talking about. Um, we are ensuring the viewers who are watching to return. <laughs> That's what you want, right? You want to have broadcasters and viewers and all those other people who see it go, man, I want more. I want to come back. I want to check it out again. And this is a big one for you guys and for anyone, really, that's uh, trying to be a full-time broadcaster or a developer broadcaster on Twitch, is creating new opportunities for developers to generate revenue. So, you know, it's good to have money. I don't think that's anything wrong with that. We want to make sure to help you with that, too. Now, again, this isn't my team. This is another team. So revenue and all other stuff, they know. I'm here to just share this stuff with you. So when you are thinking about Twitch and you go, what am I supposed to do? My game doesn't exist. It's just a small indie title that no one's ever heard of. But the thing is that all the games are connected. There's a whole ecosystem. So just thinking that your game doesn't exist over here, it actually does. It exists as a bubble that goes into the whole universe. It's a living gaming ecosystem that can change, right? These titles have changed in the past couple of years to other titles, but, but games don't go away. Because every now and then, something cool happens with that game and it comes right back. Now that can either be an official developer helping that title, or it could be a broadcaster who figured out a really cool way to incorporate some type of gaming into that game like H1Z1, all this stuff. There's titles that go away and come back all the time. Uh, having like a betting system into Mugen 
Mugen is a game where fighting game that uh, is user generated content basically. So you can have all sorts of like Simpsons characters fighting other cartoon characters. And then it was called Salty Bets. And Salty Bets made it really, really, really popular. But now it's disappeared, but not gone. It's just in another part of the ecosystem. So that's really important to think that your game does exist and it does matter on Twitch. So now we're getting into like some of the cool stuff that happened. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there was a kid in Australia uh, before developers were using our API, before the tiny builds out there, the Vlambeers out there, who heard my, my story of please put our API into your game, a kid put it into a version of uh, Pokemon for Game Boy. And this was a huge, huge, huge hit. Uh, it started out with maybe 15,000 people watching the Twitch chat control the character. But then towards the end, it went to about 120,000 people uh, watching the, the, the epic journey of trying to beat Pokemon, Twitch plays Pokemon. And so this inspired Reddit threads, it inspired clothing, it inspired a whole world of content from this one little concept of using Twitch's API to, create, uh, to control a little character. And then it also inspired Fish Plays Pokemon. So the content from the other channel inspired other people to create content. And this content was a fish that had motion controls over the fishbowl playing Pokemon <laughs> on Game Boy. I don't know, it's some, sometimes people thought the fish died, but it was actually just asleep. And so it created a whole new world. Um, not only did Twitch plays Pokemon inspire Fish plays Pokemon, it also inspired uh, Fish plays Street Fighter. They did the same thing with the Street Fighter game. Um, Twitch plays My Pet Rock, which was just people watching a rock. It, there's been a lot of amazing content. What I'm getting at is, when you give content to creative people, when you go, all right, my game, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna have a, a developer channel. I'm gonna give my game to the world of Twitch. When the world of Twitch gets their hands on it, you never know what's gonna happen. And this, no one could have written this. I didn't know that people were gonna have fish play Pokemon. That, made, <laughs> that came out of nowhere. I didn't know how people were gonna play, uh, fish, uh, Twitch plays My Pet Rock. And there was 20,000 people watching it. There was 90,000 people watching this. That's a lot of people watching ridiculous content. And that's the beauty of it. It wasn't forced, it was woven in. It was uh, grassroots, it just happened. So, you guys might have heard about this, but if not, we have creative on Twitch. But to kick off that, in America, we had this dude named Bob Ross. Bob Ross, was an iconic person on public access television back in the 70s and 80s. His stuff had been off of TV for a very long time. So we got the rights to play it, and when we put it on Twitch, you guys can't see the number, but there's 33,000 people watching a show that had been off the air for about 30 years before coming back onto Twitch. And one of the cool things about this is that like, it's all organic, and that this guy was really funny. So the thing is, is that Bob Ross, back in the 70s and 80s, he was doing something that was relevant to the time, but when it came back, it was still relevant, because he was hilarious. And this chat created all sorts of memes and jokes and other things. And that kicked off creative on Twitch, is where people now are doing cosplay. They're showing you how they make their costumes. They're showing uh, you how to paint, like Bob Ross was. They're showing you how to cook. There's cooking on us now. And uh, all sorts of really other cool things. Uh, leather crafting, welding. This is all creative stuff. Uh, making comic books. See, Twitch isn't just gameplay. It's, uh, it's a creative place for creative things, pop culture things, too. And so, that leads me into talking about major media on Twitch. This is Adult Swim. 
So Adult Swim Games is their gaming studio, which is still independently ran. Uh, and Adult Swim is a different branch. And so they show, they, they, they don't, so they took Twitch and they do different content. In America, we had something called the Powerball. And, there, and it was like almost a billion dollars or $700 million or some crazy number. So they did a play on that and they're doing the friendship ball where everybody who played <laughs> became friends with them. So they, in their own unique voice, they took what was going on in uh, mainstream media and mainstream coverage of the Powerball and had fun with it and wrapped it up into their own unique voice. And you guys could do the same thing too, right? You could take content on your channel and make it as mainstream as you want, as underground as you want. You, it's kind of just really up to you. And that's the beauty of Twitch, right? Like, we're not here to tell you, don't do that. There's obvious things you shouldn't do, obviously. But we want you to have a good time with it. And that's, this is some of the stuff that pops up. And then the, the thing, in, you guys can't, uh, that, that blurry thing in the corner over here, you can actually call them. <laughs> you can actually call them live, and they'll answer the, the, the call, and yeah, that's crazy, but they do it. And this is Adult Swim, so this is actually a very big media company. It's ran by Turner. Turner Broadcasting. Turner Broadcasting runs TNN, TBS, uh, uh, HBO, CNN, and Cartoon Network, and this. And they're doing it. And there's not a lot of people watching, but there will be. And that's the cool thing about this, is that this branch of Turner's property has said, all right, cool, we're gonna try this. This is something that's never been done before. So when people who are familiar with the brand come into the chat, they kind of lose their mind. Um, I know I did when I first came across Adult Swim as a kid, and now to see Adult Swim as an adult pushing the boundaries of traditional media live with Twitch content is kind of a big deal. Okay, so we're talking about like the API stuff, and I really wanna help you guys, I wanna push you guys, I want you guys to think differently. Because, you know, with the success of uh, Punch Club, that was just using a simple integration. Well, I say simple, but I don't know how hard it was to make it. I'm not a, I'm not a developer. I'm just a creative guy. But what if, what if you are playing the new Mass Effect with the chat? But the chat is one of the characters in game. And the chat has the ability to put their chat text right there. Well, how crazy would that be? Like, what if the chat was a character? Now, what they say might not make any sense, but just the concept of what if a character in chat was a sentient being in game that you could play with? That would be wild. And so, that's the kind of stuff I'm coming to you guys with. Like, don't just think linear anymore with our API. Now, I don't, again, I don't make this stuff, but I, I can help you guys think outside the box a little. And that's definitely out of the box thinking. Because I hadn't thought about that. I started thinking, man, what if chat was a character? Rather than just being something that helps you or hurts you or pl plays the main character, what if, what if you had a companion that was one of these guys? It was actually all of these guys in one. Who the hell knows what would happen with that? That would be insane. What if chat can help you make the world, right? That's, this is one I always go back to, No Man's Sky. But how cool would it be if the chat had the ability to make a planet that you went into? So you, being the main character, don't know what's gonna happen when you go into the planet, but the chat is scrambling, putting in all this stuff. I want panda bears, or <laughs> I want to have 15 foot tall, you know, sh like grass or trees that are upside down and fire for the sky. Who knows? I'm just being creative, right? I'm just throwing ideas out there, right? Who knows what can happen whenever we actually just figure out how to open up the floodgates for creativity with you, the developers, creating opportunities for the chat to make a brand new engaging game with Twitch, 
right? It's, it's, a, it's a whole new genre of gameplay. It's no longer a multiplayer game. It's like a bigger than that. It's more massive. It's more massively multiplayer. That's what we can call it, because there's already MMOs out there. But it takes a single player campaign, quasi single player campaign, and makes it multiplayer with the chat. So what should you start doing if you guys are interested in figuring out how to get into Twitch and start broadcasting on us or getting incorporated with uh, the community and stuff? Yeah, embrace the community, the good and the bad. Uh, you have to understand that there's a lot of vocal people out there and they're gonna say a lot of things. And if it's okay to be upset at times, it's okay to be happy with what they say, um, take it with a grain of salt. What I've learned over years is that the people who really love your stuff d aren't as vocal as the people who just wanna be mean. <laughs> so, but it's actually really good. It's like really good feedback at times because it's good to hear everything. Um, so embrace the community. Um, think about your long-term strategy. How do you want to do this? And that can mean in one year, we want to do 12 shows. We want to do once a month. And that's it. Nothing too much. You don't want to drain yourself. The last thing I want to hear you guys do is uh, get mad at us for, for streaming too much. And we had nothing to do with that. Network with other streamers. That will help you grow as well. Um, that's really important. And that will get you to the next level. Uh, sometimes small games like Binding of Isaac uh, became big games because of streaming. Uh, and then determine what content works for you. Figure that part out. That's a big one. You want to make sure that the content that you're doing is right for you, but how do you figure that part out? You have to make the content first. It's okay to fail. It's actually really good to fail because that means that didn't work for you, didn't work for your game. Let's figure out what does work. Sometimes being a over-the-top personality running around your underwear isn't a thing for you. Leave that for me. Uh, but you guys can figure out what works for you guys. So thank you. Thank you. That's kind of Twitch in a nutshell. I hope you liked it. I could talk about this all day. If you have any questions, I'm here. He'll, he'll help me. <laughs> Microphone. There we go. OK. Sounds like it. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. Sound. That's pretty loud. Um, okay, so if you guys have any questions, I can help translate. Я могу помочь перевести, если у вас есть вопросы на русском языке. Так, у нас есть вопрос вон там, вон, вон там. Hi, John. Hey. First of all, welcome to Russia. Thank you. Yeah. I Amazing. love it. <laughs> well, enjoy our hospitality, buddy. Okay, so question is pretty much easy. So um, when you came up with the idea and you know, like basic idea of the Twitch, in the beginning, how tough was it? <laughs> oh, yeah, like that. So let's say on scale from one to ten, like how tough was it, you know, to start the thing, especially sure. with your background, yeah. and uh, and why? So uh, for me, everyone remember everybody has their own reason. My my journey was. Uh, I worked in live TV for a very long time. I used to work for Fox and I used to work for CBS. And live streaming, uh, when I first saw it on Justin TV, I was like, oh my God, I have to try that. And um, I, I was immediately grabbed by it. And how hard was it? Well, I've been streaming and I was part of the live streaming thing for a very long time. Uh, so 2009, 2010, it was a 10. It was very difficult. But that was my fault. That was my fault. And the reason why I say it was a 10 because it was my fault is because when I was streaming on Justin TV, when I was streaming on Twitch in the early, early days, I tried to make it serious. I'm not a serious person. Uh, I fought, I tried to make a normal show that uh, you would see on TV and talk about video game news. And that didn't work for me. When I realized in the very, very beginning, I'm going to make you laugh. I'm going to have a good time with you. Uh, I'm going to do anything and everything just to make you crack up. I, I, I would see the chat as lots of people, but at times I would see the chat as one person as well. And when I treated it as my best friend, when I treated the chat, whether there was 500 people or five people in there, 
I, uh, when I treated it as my best friend, then it all started working. Uh, I took myself way too serious. Uh, but that's my personality. My personality is a, com is a comedian, not a uh, serious news journalist, which I tried to make happen on Twitch. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Yes, uh, sure. I've seen in, in the end of the hall. Cases with mobile games on Twitch? Yeah, uh, Clash of Clans. Well, uh, <laughs> besides the most famous, let's see. Uh, there's several. So mobile games are a completely different beast. But Clash of Clans, you said besides that one, but that is a good case. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> Crash Royale, there you go. That, that's another one. They, they, again, they come and go, right? Um, it's just mobile gaming is built for, remember I was talking about long form? Twitch is long form entertainment. Um, but mobile gaming is built for, well, Vanglory. Van, Vanglory. Vanglory have like the 30 minute session. Exactly. Time. See? And See, the games that you could play for a long time do well. Not like the, uh, the games that are like pick up and play and disappear. But uh, Jetpack Joyride, I think, would, if, if Jetpack Joyride would have bit, like, come up now, I think that would be a perfect game for Twitch. But it's been around a little bit too long. However, I think, see, like, so there's games out there that, when I start thinking about it, there's opportunities for titles that I think would work. But yeah, those were, there's, there are very few at this point. I'm not saying that give up. If you have a mobile game, come on, bring it. Let's make something cool happen. Hi, John. Hey. Uh, I have a question about Twitch TOS and its enforcement. OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to let you know I'm not a partnerships person. I'm a creative. Uh, so yeah. I probably broke those rules. Yeah, so let me just figure it out. Yeah, but it's not like any specific question, but okay. just uh, uh, an impression. So I think a lot of people think that uh, Twitch apply, applies um, TOS very inconsistently and have double standards. Oh. And uh, what, do you have any comment on that? I ha I, well, that's the thing is like, I don't come up with any of that stuff. I'm actually so far removed from that world. Um, I come up with different concepts and stuff. There's a whole partnerships team. There's a whole group of people that really think very long and hard about the, uh, the TOS stuff. I'm not one of them. I am, a, I am in a corner of a room with a bunch of toys playing video games. And they go, John, we have an idea. Can you make it better? And I go, OK, give, me that. give, give it to me. Let's eat some Doritos in a bathtub. So I don't really know. <laughs> See, I'm not the guy that comes up with the rules, not me. <laughs> he would know that, not me. I'm not coming up with no rules. Uh, do we have any more questions? Um, oh, we have some in the back. I got a few questions for you. You know, I'll you got quite, you asked me yeah, hard yeah, yeah. ones, man. Hey, John, welcome to Moscow. Hey, what's up? Thank you for having me. Uh, what uh, about the craziest ideas of stream on Twitch uh, become successful? You can tell. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, some of the craziest ideas out there have been like just Twitch in general, <laughs> playing video games, right? People watching other people playing video games. That was a pretty crazy idea. Back in the day, people, uh, when it existed on Justin TV, it was um, very small. And I was part of that time. And so I've seen great ideas like Salty Bets just explode into popularity. Um, there's been people who will put like a human mouth over a cat, like a, like a cat animation, uh, kitten mitten. And so things like that. They're not, so like crazy to, there's not really crazy. You know what I mean? Crazy ideas would be like, ah, wow, I don't really know. So like Twitch in itself is a crazy idea. And that people got into it and uh, made sense of the whole thing. I just get really happy when I see brand new ideas happen. Um, a lot of Twitch can uh, start looking the same. So when people start doing st uh, stuff that's different, like Future Man, who comes from the future to save us all, <laughs> but the future is like from the 80s. When I see stuff like that, I get really, really, really excited for 
Um, because that's what Twitch is all about. Twitch is about creativity, it's about moving forward, it's about figuring out brand new and different things. So crazy to me is just uh, pioneering a new idea, and I love that. I would like to see major media put cartoons and stuff on us where we control the ending. How cool would that be? I mean, what, what, if, what, if, uh, what if regular TV was on and you at home could say, I want ending number two? That's a crazy idea. I haven't seen that yet. That would be amazing to me. Um, I got a question for you. Okay, here we go. So if I am here in the audience and I have a crazy idea, uh, yeah. what's my best course of action? Uh, do I just catch you after this lecture and try to get your contact details? Yeah, you could do yeah. that. Because yeah. some people may be shy. That's why I'm asking. Talk to me after. And again, I'm a different. There's so many people at Twitch now. Hit me up with an email uh, if you have, if you want to go that route, and I'll connect you with the right person. So I'll be hanging around here. I'll be hanging around the lobby and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you're shy, don't have a question out here. Just talk to me anywhere. I love, I love what I do. And I'll talk to you all day and night about Twitch. And if I don't have the answer for you, we can get you an answer. Awesome. Thank you cool. so much, Thank John. You.